Looking for an easy way to create stylized oval eyes and eyelids in Maya? Well, you come to the right video. We're gonna be using the power of groups to actually make our task a lot easier. If you're just first starting out with Maya, you might think that groups or only for organizational purposes within the package only. But I'm gonna show you how we can use them to model and also to help animation in the video coming up. So before we start, this is the type of eye that we'll be creating. So if I go in here, and we can just basically uh, isolate this. This is ultimately what we're gonna be building, right? And uh, when we create a, a perfectly round eye, this becomes a lot easier because uh, you could actually just uh, rotate the uh, actual eyelids around a spherical uh, object and the eyelids really don't need to deform. Uh, but when you create these oval eyes that are pretty much squished, uh, creating these eyelids without this workflow can truly be a pain. So let's go ahead and get started. So with my sphere created, I'm gonna go ahead and create the eyelids, right? So I'll go ahead and do Control D, which is gonna duplicate our object. Uh, I'll select all the verts, activate my move tool. Uh, we could just scale, but I'm just gonna push and pull on the normal just to give us ourselves a little bit of breathing room between the actual eye and the eyelids, right? So from this point, we want to basically model the eyelids all the way closed and then we can rotate them open. So what I'll do here is I'll select this edge loop here and this edge loop here as well. And then I will shift and right click and I'll go to detach components, right? So now uh, basically that detach split these, um, split these edges apart. So now if I run a, a, sep a mesh and separate, we have a, a lower eyelid and a top eyelid, right? So now what I wanna do is actually we're done with the modeling. Now it's time for the group to do some of the work. And what I could do here uh, before I call this done is I could add a little bit of thickness here. So I'll take this edge here. I'll go ahead and do a, a offset here. I'm sorry, on the thickness. I'll bring this guy in and then if I wanted to, I can go ahead and drop a holding edge there if we're gonna smooth this eye out. So maybe I'll go in here and drop a reinforcing loop. And then uh, we'll go ahead and do the same thing on this part. So I'll go ahead and extrude and then put the uh, thickness inward. The other option too um, is you can, um, if you want to do like three divisions, that'll go basically uh, add a holding edge, but I'm just going to manually do it uh, just to match the other one. So I'll go ahead and drop that there. So now we have our holding edge there, our holding edge there, and then we're actually done modeling. Let me go ahead and delete the history here. So anytime that you uh, detach and attach things, uh, things can get a little bit of wonky here. So we'll go to edit, delete by type, and then we'll do a history. And we should be able to delete that. All right, so now that this is modeled, let's clean this up a little bit. So this is gonna be our lower lid. And then this is gonna be our upper lid. And then we'll take this, we'll move it out of this group. We can go, we should be able to delete this and everything's still there. This is our eye. And then we're gonna take these guys, we'll do Control D to move it, right? So usually if the eye is just round, it's pretty easy to just move it, right? So here it's open, here it's open, right? So it doesn't cause a lot of problems, but when we do a stylized eye, what we essentially need is for this to be squished, right? So here's where we start getting into problems. So we squish this, and now this eye is a nightmare to open and close, right? This no longer works. So how can we actually have a system where we could still open and close the eyelids 
uh, but not get this uh, weird uh, deformations or it not following the shape of the eye. Well, that's where the groups come in, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this here. We'll go back to our original eyeball and then I'll hit Control G with all my objects selected. So now with the group created, what we can do is just squish the group down and it's gonna pass those transforms onto the individual uh, parts of the eye. So what we can do here is we'll go here and I'm gonna do 0.6 on the scale on the Z. You see that's gonna squish it down. So now if I go to my lower eyelid and I rotate this, you see that it's gonna follow the shape of the eye and the same uh, way with the uh, pretty much the top of the eye. And if you want the eyes a little bit uh, longer as well, uh, what we can do is just go back to the group here and then on the X, we can do 0.6, uh, something like that. I think that's a little bit too extreme. So maybe we can go ahead and do 0.8 here. And maybe on the Y, we can go 1.3. Uh, and there we go, right? So that's nice, uh, stylized. And now um, all these values right here are gonna get passed down to these and you still can go back to the individual objects and you see we could also rotate the eye here as well and it stays within that volume. So if we go to the lower lid, you see that's gonna rotate fine and so is the um, lid here. So this is gonna work pretty good for modeling and even if you wanna do some simple animations as well. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks. And now when it comes to 3D modeling, stylized eyes in Maya, this is a great workflow to have in your back pocket when it's time to do so. So as always, uh, please leave your comments down below. Make sure to smash that like button and please consider subscribing as I do my uh, tutorials like this all the time. Until we meet again, I will catch you next time.